Hello, everyone. Hello, friends. Hello, enemies. Welcome to the Who Cares Podcast. Welcome to the Who Cares Podcast, a podcast that enters your soul with your host, Stephen Moran. I say that in jest, but I don't say that to be flippant. I say it because I last, this past week, not last, this past week I got a lot of emails and uh, DMs basically saying, how dare I talk about South Central Los Angeles like that? And I'm an artist, first of all. I'm a singer. I like art. So that makes me an artist, actually. That, that absolutely makes me an artist. Um, I don't like numbers. Um, I don't like dudes that wear suits uh, from men's warehouse. Um, if you're going to wear a suit, you wear it fitted with an ascot or at least a pocket square that looks fantastic on you. If you're a woman and you're beautiful and you dress like shit, um, I have no time for you because that also means it possibly in the lower region, it might smell as well. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the who cares podcast. And I want to let everybody out there know that I do believe in art. First and foremost, and by art, I mean uh, Disneyland. Yes, Disney fucking land. Disneyland, the land that you went to as a child, the land that you spent many, many, many times. Well, I can't say that for every one of you. I'm sorry if your parents didn't take you there. I've talked to some people that live like in the Midwest and they went to like Six Flags or something. And their parents never took them. It's interesting that their parents never took them because people from fucking Germany and uh, China, even though they have one over there, um, Japan, they have one over there too, actually. Uh, but, you know, you meet so many people from around the globe. And I'm sorry if your parents never took you to Disneyland, not Disney World, because Disney World to me kind of feels like no offense to everybody out there. I'm probably going to get um, a big backlash again like I did last week. But Disneyland to me in Orlando, I, I went there. Um, it, you know what it felt like? It felt like um, a trailer park. And that's it. It just felt like a, a serious, like, like it. it's kind of like that new mall, that, or not because there's no more malls, that new plaza that comes in and, and acts like they're going to be like big time, you know? And, and they are. I mean, in all actuality, Disney World uh, it kicks yourself. Disneyland's ass. However, there's a there's a quiet magic, and the real magic. It's it's like that's where the magic is. Even though it's in stupid Anaheim. No offense, Anaheim. I'm not really sure. I mean, I I read the book by Walt Disney. I know why. I know why he picked it. Not by Walt Disney, but about him. And uh, I know why he picked it. There was you know lots of land that was cheap, and uh, a lot cheaper than L.A. at the time. And um, nothing was there. Uh, there wasn't the crime that there is there now. There wasn't the um, uh, the ability to rob all the patrons that go there because there was nothing there really. You know, um, there wasn't nefarious companies coming in there trying to suck off the teat of Walt Disney. He just wanted to put something there that um, you know made him money. Actually, no, he really didn't care about you. No, I think he really did. I think he really cared about you. I think he really, uh, he made it, he, he really, he was a weirdo. Basically, he had a train in his backyard. But I feel like I want a train in my backyard. In fact, during Christmas time, I have, I have these model trains that go throughout my whole house. that right on the top, right on the bottom. Uh, my family is in the railroad. So I, I understand his love of trains. I understand his love of like, because when I was a kid, I would come home and, and after Disneyland and I'd try to make... Pirates of the Caribbean in my backyard because we had like this ditch thing. Um, I don't know. Like it, it it was perfect for it, except I wasn't a very good engineer. So going back to that, I'm not mathematical. I'm creative. I'm an artist. And I would come back and I I, I tried to make the doom, doom buggy, right, from the Haunted Mansion. I remember I tried to make that. And that was weird. And uh, there was like a lot of wood a lot of stuff going on. It looked similar to like, like if you were to be uh, like a, a tweaker, 
nowadays. And you know, you've gone to their houses and shit and there's like, uh, VCRs that are like, you know, not put together. And you're like, who's used a VCR in the last 35 years. And then maybe there's like a, a, a DVD player and you're like, okay, who's used a DVD player in the last 15 years. And they're like, well, no, I, I promise. Like I'm going to get, it, I'm going to get it together. And like, everything's just kind of a mess, you know? And that's kind of, as a kid, that's kind of what happened. And really what that is, is I guess I didn't know it, but I had ADHD and I think Walt Disney had ADHD, but he had really good people around him. So I guess I'm similar to Walt Disney. I just need the really good people around me. I think that's really what we're talking about. So um, Disneyland, to go back to it, it's way better than Orlando. I went there. I, I went to Orlando. Um, I went there actually to try out for a boy band. Do you remember that guy, Lou Pearlman? Yeah, I'm sure you do. He was a fat idiot that like molested all of NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys and uh, sucked off Justin and and, and uh Man, it's pretty pretty sad. J.C. Chazé or whatever. Supposedly, like that's really the story. Um, and if they don't want to say it, I mean, prove me wrong. I mean, I think that there's actual diaries by him and stuff. And um, you know, and I'm, how big could they have been at that time? Which is really creepy by that big fat guy, you know. But um, anyways, I didn't know that at the time. I went and tried out for. Uh, I went to Orlando and I went and tried out for this. Uh, extravaganza, extravaganza, and uh, and it actually was amazing. Uh, I'll be honest with you, it was uh, a fantastic time. I've never been to Orlando before. In fact, when I went to Orlando, um, we didn't have Chick Fil A here, so that would have been like 2005, right? And um, I was very young, and um, I wasn't taken advantage of, which unfortunately I, that, that sucks because then I could have probably been not doing this podcast and I would be a multi-millionaire, you know, like O-Town or, or what's the other one with uh, 98 degrees. And, um, so, but I did go through a lot of different, um, categories. I think there was like the modeling one. There was like uh, the singing one. And, um, I just remember one of them telling me that I was arrogant. Uh, the, another one telling me that, um, well, you know, I never had any kind of like training to, you know, like probably the way I walked was like what I would think like a model would walk. You know what I mean? And so it probably was exaggerated like a like a complete weirdo. Um, but I would say I should have won all the competitions because I actually hooked up with a plethora of individuals from uh, the from the top floor down to the bottom. And in fact, when I left uh, this girl from Knoxville, she smoked a lot of cigarettes though, which was weird because you could smell it on her. But she actually like kind of ran and she's, this, she was like, I'll, I'll see you again one day. I'll see you again. And I'm like, I don't know if you will because you smoke a lot of cigarettes and your face is already getting like a little bit, you know, you, yeah, you're young, but like, you know, cigarettes, you know, they're kind of like, they're making, you know, black doesn't crack, but, you, this white girl from Knoxville does crack. That's pretty much what, what happens. And so, but we did spend a beautiful night together the night before and all that. And she, she was from Knoxville and then she actually did say that she knew Johnny Knoxville. And I said, that's ridiculous. Um, but then she started saying some stories about him and I'm not going to share those because that's, that's on him and his catheter and stuff. But, but she actually did know him, you know? So, um, anyways, so I went there, we went to Pleasure Island and I stayed with like three different people, which was weird. I'm not sure if Lou Perlman did that on purpose. Um, we're supposed to stay with the same, same sex and that was even weird too. I won't even get into that. Um, but while I was there, my girlfriend at home was busy, um, painting the house to try and make me happy when I got home. Right. And I'm very young. We're, I think we're just happy that we're, we had a little small, place and it, it was haunted and that'll be another totally totally another episode but uh she just wanted to make it very nice for me and i had this weirdo friend named carlos who uh when i got back he said steven steven you want you know your girlfriend called me over and i said um yeah she already told me like she did um what, what's the problem dude just like you know like i think she called me over dude i'm on no i know she called you over and you went over there so that's okay yeah, and she wanted me to, like paint with her, bro. Like for you and stuff. But I think what I'm thinking is that she like she liked me, dude. You know, she like liked me. And I said, 
Um, I don't know how to break this to you, Carlos. Um, you, you have scars on your face. You went through a windshield. No offense. Um, you're awkward. Uh, you talk with the voice of a fairy. And uh, you have no coordination. Uh, you have no sexual like uh, attraction to other people. So I'm going to go out on a limb right now, Carlos. I'm going to say I think she just wanted you because you're my friend. I think she just wanted you to – here comes Bentley. He loves my podcast. And I think she just wanted you to come over and paint. So uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe not. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm totally crazy. Uh, but I think that uh, Kristen – I'm pretty sure that um, I trust you on that one. I don't think you, I don't think you hooked up with Carlos, but uh, in saying that, so Disney world, I, they, at the time when I went there, they had pleasure Island, right? And it was pleasurable. It was definitely pleasurable. It was um, a lot of reggaeton, which I don't know. Is that, that must be a South Florida thing or something. Uh, there was a lot of that. And there was uh, a lot of beautiful girls, but most of which were from the resort that we were all at. And, you know, I was close to Lou Pearlman. I, 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 not close. I walked up close to him. And, um, and, and I found it odd because he looked like a man that smelled, um, like cheese, like a lot of cheese, like, you know, like, like sweaty and like maybe there might, he might hide like a piece of string cheese under his belly or something like that, you know, like something weird like that. And I couldn't believe uh, that this man enticed. And was able to um, use his, I guess, his abilities because you got to give him credit. I mean, he got me down there and I live on this side of the coast, which I've never – I live on the West Coast. And, and most people there were all Georgia, Kentucky, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, all of them. Florida, Georgia line, right? They're all those and, – and, and the mothers, some of them came with them. And we're talking like from ages like maybe 16 to 30. Which is a which is a bizarre amount of people. Luckily, uh, we didn't hear of any problems and stuff like that, you know, because that we were, you know, we, you know, ho- most of the people there were not really worried about hooking up so much as they were worried about just just becoming a star, because they've seen so many. And I just kind of went down there like, well, like I'm I'm a pretty good dancer, I'm a great singer, but. You know, putting it all together, like I'd never been in that. I, I, I sang before. I've been in bands, but I'd never been in like a boy band. And it just seemed to me like really, and, and everybody would like tell me like, oh, you got to go on American Idol. You got to go. You got to do make uh, trying out for making the band and all this, uh, you know, whatever. And I don't know. I just, I didn't really ever want to do it like that. I mean, would, I mean, maybe a lot of you out there would, as we see on Instagram and, and, as we see on this was kind of like Instagram before Instagram or or TikTok before TikTok like but but actually this time you actually get like contracts and stuff you know like you actually like uh you try out for people you know and and your millions of views don't mean they mean something because all you need is like one or two uh, people that really um have clout that they really want to make you a star so it's it's actually nothing like TikTok and Instagram and Snapchat. It's actually nothing like that. Um, it's actually like it's it's real, you know. But uh, so I went down there, Lou Pearlman, and he was a sweaty mess. Uh, he looked like you know, like he's sitting on his chin. Like I don't know how you look like you're sitting on your chin, but that's whatever you imagine right now. That's exactly how he looked. He was sitting on his chin. Rest in peace, Lou Pearlman. Actually, no, not rest in peace. You're a big fucking idiot. You molested kids and you took advantage of your position and you're a sweaty mess, which is probably the most egregious of all the things I just said. But you're, you're really a terrible person uh, because what we found out is um, the last night when I was there, they had this big concert, right? And uh, the finalists, and you know me, I don't know if you know me, maybe you're just listening to me for the first time, but I'm sitting there just like... <sighs> You watch, I'll be back, Lou Pearlman. You watch. But uh, then he dies, or he goes to jail, or one of the two things. I'm not really sure. And or I went home and I saw this beautiful house that was painted by Kristen and Carlos. Um, thanks, Carlos, and thanks, Kristen. 
appreciate that. So all that stuff leads me to Disney Disneyland. Disneyland. I remember going to Disneyland when I was very, very young. And um, from what I'm told, I, I kind of remember it. I just laid in the middle of Main Street and just started like screaming. I would not allow. I was maybe uh, six years old. You know, the age that I don't need a stroller, you know, like where I can walk on my own. Where like I actually enjoy it and I actually like see it for what it is because I don't really understand why parents take their kids because what the fuck? Do you remember anything before you were like four years old maybe? Get your voice heard. When everybody is out there on the streets just waiting to go viral, you have another opportunity. And that is to come to Anchor.fm. Download the free Anchor app and join us here at the What's the Play family. And make sure that you DM us here, Stephen, at Who Cares the Podcast, or go to info at what's the play.net so you can join our family. We'll promote the shit out of you. We will promote everything about you. Make sure you're cool. We're not going to promote some of weirdos. We're going to make sure we promote you because everybody needs their voice to be heard. Everybody during this time needs that voice, right? Don't you need that voice? You can go global tomorrow. Just join Anchor.fm. Go to Anchor.fm to get started, all right? But make sure more than all that you join the What's the Play family. Info at What's the Play.net will help you set it up, will help you go through all the situational things that you need to do. And tomorrow morning, we'll make sure that you get your voice heard. Do you? I mean, barely. I barely remember. I remember some old lady, maybe, that babysat me or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, and even at four years old, I don't, you know, come on. Your kids ain't going to remember. I understand you need to have them all in your your big, uh, what is it, stroller thing, like an suv size stroller. And if you're going to take one, you got to take them all. Maybe that makes sense. Um, but anyways, I'm an only child, so I wasn't. I was taken at like six years old, probably five or six, one of the two. And um, I remember it. What do you know? I guess my parents did it right. So I remember it. but And I do remember like laying down and I legitimately did not want to leave that place. I felt that it was where I need to be. I felt like it needs to be part of me. So, I mean, I don't I don't care about you guys. I, I've got Mickey, Donald and Goofy and everybody else here that says that I'm better and it's a better life over here. It's actually a way better life. If I could live like, you know, right here next to the magic store or, you know, underneath the bridge of Sleeping Beauty's castle, like a homeless bum. I don't know what it means, but I thought that I was supposed to be there. And and for some reason, I couldn't understand why they were all of a sudden closing it down. And then everything was going dark. And they're like, come on, everybody, let's go with their little like, you know, lights and stuff or saber lights or whatever. Their little glow in the dark lights. And... um and I really, I, I, honest Scott, I, I, I remember that. And you know what that is? That's, um, oh, that's my parents waiting until I was of age and right enough to go there. So I remember it. Yeah. That's exactly what that is. And so I remember it and, and I can explain it to you exactly how it happened. I mean, I thought for sure that Tom Sawyer's island was going to be, that's my island. And now it's called Pirates Island or whatever the fuck. But at the time it was called Tom Sawyer's. And it's really not changed all. It's just that Tom Sawyer has like some weird connotation with like Native Americans. But back in the day, they used to call them Indians, I guess, because that doesn't even make sense because there's people from India are actually Indians. And I can't believe that it lasted, what, 400, 500 years. That's, that's ridiculous. I guess people were definitely, as much as we want to give them credit before us, they weren't smart. So that's weird. But anyways, so they had some guy named Injun Joe, which Injun, I think is short for Indian maybe or something. And so Mark, what's his name? I don't know. The first celebrity, the guy that wrote uh, Huckleberry Finn. I don't know whatever his name is. Uh, it's all the same shit. Mark Twain. There you go. Mark Twain. That's all the same shit. Like, I don't know the difference between the name Mark Twain, Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer. They, they could all be like three people. Uh, I don't remember that part of my childhood. I just know that one of them wrote it. I think it's Mark Twain, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was like the celebrity, right? I know everybody's going to be like, no, it's, of course it's Mark Twain. But, right. But who cares, right? I mean, what's the difference between Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer? Aren't they the same like guy with like some shoes off? Like he doesn't have any shoes and he's got like uh, torn uh, shorts maybe. And he's got a, a swim, a fishing, swimming pool, a fishing pole maybe or something. I don't know. Anyways, they named that island after Mark Twain's 
uh, an amazing book supposedly called Tom Sawyer's Tom Sawyer. And they called it Tom Sawyer's Island. And which I loved about it because I could like hide. There was a fort and I thought I just pretty much owned that place. And I, I don't, I don't know if every other kid feels like that. And please email me if you could at Stephen at who cares podcast.com. The first time that you ever went there, did you feel like you really owned it? Or like that, the, that, that, that all those Donald, Mickey, Cruella DeVille, uh, Goofy, uh, all those characters, they really, really resonated with you. They really, you thought they were your friends, right? And like, like, I know my parents are cool and everything, fuck, or, or I know like I'm with my cousins and stuff, but like, like, fuck you guys. Like I'm with, like these people really like me. Like they give me hugs and, and they look like they're so happy and everybody there is so happy to see you. And when you're a kid, when you're older, of course you realize it's just whatever, that's marketing, right? But when you're a kid, whoa. I mean, that is the magic. Where do we lose that? But where, at what age, I'd love to hear this. What age did you lose that magic? Of not just of Disneyland, of whoa. Maybe you still get like that. Maybe, uh, no, I won't even go there. Maybe you still get like that at whatever age you are. Uh, the magic is still there, and I, I love that. And the magic is still there for me too. I'm not saying it, it's a different kind of magic now. You know, um, you know, magic in the. I want look it. We're gonna stay away from the misogyny. We're going to stay away from the, um, because I did get a couple bad, uh, emails. And you know what? That really, really hurts. It really does because I was called everything from, um, uh, well, I don't want to go into it, but as a, a Latin man, a Latino who just gave his observations, I'm having some Latin interactions in South Central LA last week. Uh, some people took that very, very harsh. You, most of which, though, you'd be surprised. Most of which their last name was like, um, Smith or like, uh, you know, just pretty much white names, you know, like McConnell, Ches, like something. I don't know, whatever. Who cares? It's just people that like, you know, in their mind, they think that they know stuff, but they don't. But that's okay. I, I want everybody to understand that this this podcast is about magic with a K. Just kidding, it's not about magic with a K. That's a whole nother episode. It's about the it's about the real magic, the magic in life, like meeting people and understanding them and and and, and if it's goofy and why why did you feel that? Or when you used to watch whatever shows that you did growing up, whether it's recently um from Oh, God, I love this show. Why can't I think of it right now? Oh, Gumball. I love Gumball. I know. What a weirdo I am, right? And I don't even have kids. That's creepy, right? But I like Gumball a lot. I think it's one of the most bizarre. But Gumball's cool. Most of them are pretty stupid. But um, it's unfortunate that uh, I feel that the animation artists are really messing with the kids. They really are. I mean, you can see it. I mean, they've done a lot of drugs, and a lot of them are uh, homosexuals. And a lot of them are like kinky motherfuckers if they're not. And, um, and I don't mean anything bad about by that, but I think that it's kind of their revenge a little bit, uh, against society and call me crazy, but you can't because I actually have friends in the industry that have told me such. So, um, anyways, th if it's that or if it's all the way from all of Nickelodeon or all of Disney Channel or all the way back to me, when we actually had Saturday morning cartoons, all that stuff, that's magic. Like I, I look back at that time so fondly. Like I, I can make up a whole world in my mind. And I don't know if that's, that's why that song, I love that song. It's called, what's it called? Oh, Reading Rainbow. That's what it's called. Butterflies in the sky. I can go twice as high. Take a look. It's in a book. A Reading Rainbow. I can't go anywhere. Just kidding. I know. I'm, I'm murdering it right now. But it looks like LeVar Burton's going to be the host of Jeopardy. So that's nice. He's actually really a very cool guy and also very uh, trustworthy. You know? 
don't know. He just has that face. And um, so anyways, back to Disneyland. Um, there's a lot of weirdness going on there. But about six to about six to six years ago, you know, I had I had been not distant from my parents on purpose, but I lived in L.A. and I lived Marina del Rey and I lived in other places and they lived in uh, still lived in Whittier. And, and if anybody knows about this area, that's about 20 miles or, you know, 25 miles or something. And I was uh, in a relationship and, and doing my thing. And they had their parents actually to take the mind off me. Or whatever you know, they they were, they were, well, they're 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 the oldest, and they were the ones that actually uh, pretty much cared for their parents till the way day they died. I'm sure, the, and anybody listening to this, yes, your parents did too. I get that. If my my cousins are listening, yeah, we get it. Blah blah blah. They did too. They did some stuff, but really, let's be honest. My parents did take care of uh, their parents, and I think that's being the first child or me. I guess would be the only child. I'm not really sure, but. Um, they did. And so that was, that was what they were doing. So I really didn't see them for a good eight years or something. I mean, really, like I'd go over there once in a while and stuff. But anyways, then uh, I moved back. I moved back to the suburbs. I moved to Huntington Beach over here. And then uh, I thought, well, you know what? I need to, you know, the, the grandparents have died, you know, or their parents have died. And so now it's kind of like, okay, uh, now it's my turn, you know? And so I was like, what is my mom like? You know, what is she like? And then I thought about it and she loves Disneyland. She, she loves it from when she went. She went there like in the original days. I'm not really sure what year or what, but she really did. She went there uh, with her, her and her brother and her sister. And, and she would tell me these stories about how uh, my, our grandfather used to reserve tickets in the saloon or something. They don't do that, any of that anymore. Of course they don't. But that would be too classy. But, you know, they actually did it like a real production. You know what I mean? And now they, it's kind of like a production, but it's not. Everything's been dumbed down a little bit, but that's okay. Um, and I think what happened was, uh, oh, I know what it was. It was uh, making payments on a annual pass. Now I understand that like uh, everybody needs a shot at Disneyland, but maybe you know we didn't have annual. Pa- I didn't have an annual pass growing up. When I went to Disneyland, it was like a maybe quarterly or maybe uh, twice a year, maybe maybe twice a year, yeah, and. So when I was surprised with it or when I was told, hey, you're going to Disneyland today. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm going to Disneyland. I'm going to Disneyland. I'm, you know, and it, it, that was legitimate. If you go all the time, you're just burning your kids out. And it's just a way for you to just burn your – like you have – because you aren't really that creative, I guess. And you're just taking your kids because why not? I have uh, the payment plan or whatever. I don't know what they're doing now. They're doing something weird. But it's called a magic key or something like that. And you just want to take them and you hear, you just jump in the stroller, hair, we're just going to, you know, and you, I'm sure that you get excitement out of your kids, but not really. You just, it's, it's a day for you to not have to deal with them pretty much because they're looking at other things, right? So I think less is more, especially when you're a kid. And they may get teased at school. Wait, you don't go to, you don't go to Disneyland. The kid that goes to Disneyland all the time is a pile of shit. Cause he's fucking numb to it now. And now he's a spoiled asshole. And that's fucking real. I don't care who, who's listening to this right now. Whoever is, your kid's a fucking asshole. I bet you if they go to Disneyland all the time, because you're taking the magic out of it, man. It's one thing if you want to go a bunch when you're like older and stuff like that. That's great. But you got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them. And you got to know when to walk away. You have to. Disneyland is not meant to be an everyday occurrence. Granted, there are some big goofs that walk around with ears and, and you know, all, all the, what do you call it, flair all around their, you know, they got so many pins and they... I mean, they just imagine that person, and that's exactly who we're talking about. And and I love the fact that people really get into it. But, you know, sometimes a good thing doesn't need to be every day. Now, if it's your, if it's your girl, if it's your man, then not, you need to have that every day, of course. But I'm talking about, like, adventures. Because they're not, they don't become adventures anymore. They become commonplace. 
and they become boring. And if one kid told me like he's over Disneyland at an age that I was, because I think up until I was like probably shit, 15, 16. I mean, 16 years old, it was a whole other adventure. We used to go drop acid there. But, and, you know, dress up like in weird punk outfits and everybody used to get freaked out by us. That's a whole other adventure. But I probably up until the age of like 13, like I still felt the magic because it wasn't abused. It wasn't abused. And remember, Disneyland is magic. It's what you make of it. It's what you need. It's what's a part of you. Butterfly in the sky. I can go twice as high. Take a look. It's in a book. A reading rainbow. I can go anywhere. Friends to know and ways to grow. A reading rainbow. I can be anything. Take a look. It's in a book. A reading rainbow. Does yourself.